you know, dual sport motorcycles are really popular now because you can ride off-road and then you can take them on the street because they're street legal. But there are a lot of things about a dual sport that you need to know about before you buy one. And I'm going to tell you the ugly truth about dual sports. Let's go for a ride. Subscribe today. You know, I owned a dual sport. I owned a Yamaha WR250R. Did a lot of modifications to it. You might want to go check the build I did on that. And that was a really a nice bike, man. But then I got a 2019 YZ450FX that I converted into a street legal supermoto, which you can do here in Ohio. That's another great thing about Ohio. You can plate pretty much anything, even a two-stroke. But I'll tell you, this stepped the game up because I actually turned this into a supermoto slash dual sport. This is the best of both worlds. A lot of people don't do this. And I did it as a trial experiment and it has been awesome because I'll tell you there are some drawbacks to a dual sport motorcycle that you need to know about. You know, dual sport motorcycles have generally have a 21 inch front wheel and an 18 inch rear wheel as where the super motos, they have the 17 inch wheels that are great for the street. The 21 inch front and the 18 inch rear wheel is great for off road, but it doesn't do well on the street because you can't really take corners too low. You risk sliding out and low siding. And there's some other things about a dual sport that is really not that great that you need to know about. But before I get on my bike here, do some riding and talk about the ugly truth about dual sports, make sure you guys are wearing the gear to stay safe out there. And I have links to some awesome gear like my airbag vest to help keep you safe. My ultra lightweight carbon fiber helmet that comes with an automatic tent shield favorite helmet. Motovlog camera, shorty gloves jacket pants all my gear i include links in the description and comment section of this video for those of you guys who want to see the build i did on this yz 450 effects if you go check it out i'll include a link in the top right corner i've had this since 2018 and i have not done any valve checks on this or anything the drawback to taking a dirt bike and making it street legal is that if you ride it a lot you have to do a lot of maintenance on this bike because you got to change the oil often like every probably like at least every 10 hours as where a street bike you do it like every 3,000 miles and then you got you're supposed to check the valves but the reason why i got the yz 450 effects is because they are known for their valves not moving and i hate doing maintenance on a bike i hate doing valve checks so i have not done a single valve check on this bike since i bought this bike in 2018 and it's it starts up lightning fast and rides better than it did brand new but you got to do a lot of oil changes so you can't i can't go touring on this bike as where wr250r a drz 400 ktm 690 smcr or the husk varna 701 supermoto or dual sports um you can take those across the country because they're you know require regular oil changes like bikes like regular bikes every 3,000 miles what's cool about this bike is that I could take this bike anywhere pretty much man so yeah I could take it off-road because I got the Shinko 705 ADV tires on here Woo! it is muddy back here and uh, so I can go anywhere. That's why I say this is a dual sport because I put the uh, Shinko 705 ADV tires and they last a long time. I have not changed these tires, guys, since I bought this bike. <laughs> As where a dual sport, those knobbies wear out fast. The 21 and 18 inch wheels on a dual sport, you can't make those wheels tubeless, really for the street you have to have inner tubes so if you get a puncture out here on the streets you can't just fix it like you can my bike which is tubeless my wheels that i made tubeless on these 17 inch rims um, i can just get a patch and patch it up in less than five minutes as where the inner tubes i mean you got to take the tire off you're not going to be doing that on the side of the road 
so you're probably going to have to call for a tow. That is the biggest drawback to a dual sport. And I tell you, I've experienced that, but I got a puncture in my tire when I was out in Colorado, out in the city. And I'll tell you guys that luckily it didn't hit the inner tube. Otherwise, I would have been stranded. It was at that point, then I was like, you know what, man? We got to think about getting something else. And uh, so that's why, and I wanted to step up to the 450, and that's why I was like, let's go ahead and get the 17-inch wheels, put ADV tires that have the grip that allows you to go off-road, but yet I can make them tubeless, and I can patch the tire up if I ever get a puncture. And also, you know, a lot of the dual sports, which a lot of you guys think adventure motorcycles are dual sports, which they are not. Most people tour on the ADV bikes or they cruise around out here on the streets or something. You're not going to be taking the ADV bike off road and, and messing around too much because if, if you drop the bike, try picking up a 600 pound bike off road a couple of times, you'll be tired as hell for the day. You're done. You're not going to want to mess around off road uh, with an ADV bike. So get that out of your mind thinking the ADV bikes are dual sports. Forget about it. Now I know they have lighter weight uh, dual sports, uh, ADV dual sports, like the Yamaha, was it T700 or whatever? It's out now and it's a, a lot lighter weight, but it's still not a lightweight bike. That's like the KTM 690 a dual sport and the Husqvarna 701. Even though the KTM 690 and Husqvarna 701 have lower maintenance and they're powerful, dual sports and you can mess around off-road with them but they are a bit hefty too man at 350 360 360 pounds as where my bike is sitting at 265 pounds which is much easier to wrangle around and mess around in the woods on and with also you know with dual sports is that a lot of the box store dual sports where you can buy their street re street legal ready to roll most of them are pretty slow you know what I'm saying? Like they they used they don't sell the WR 250R anymore, but they have the the XR 250 or whatever that is. Uh, and then you've got the Suzuki DRZ 400. You've got the which you can mod them and make them faster. Then you got the KLX 300 Dual Sport. You got you got uh, the faster KTM 690 Dual Sport and the Husqvarna 701. But like I said, they're a lot heavier than say the uh, DRZ 400 or the XR 250L, whatever that's called for the, or the CRF 250L for the Honda, which I think sitting at about 300 pounds or something like that. But they're, they're generally, they're slow and you have to mod them. And even when you mod them, they're not really that fast. They're not gonna be like this bike here, man. This is a pure race 450 bike here. You know what I'm saying? So that's why for those of you guys that want to, you know, a super moto, life and the dual sport life honestly this is your best bet right here <laughs> it's and this is one of the this is probably the best dirt bike to convert to a supermoto slash dual sport is this uh uh yz 450 fx and there's a guy on youtube that he he created a, here in ohio he created a uh, street legal uh, YZ 450 FX for in a dual sport form and he loves it. He think he put like 400 hours on there And he, he said he hardly just does oil changes on there like I do man I'm telling you these things are like bulletproof And I tell you with the Shinko 705 tires these these tires are almost like bulletproof man I've ridden over glass I've beat on them off-road and over logs everything and they I have not had any problems with them at all However, the 17-inch Supermoto wheels suck going over logs. As you see here, I hit a hidden log that I wasn't expecting and had a real effed up day and ended up with a broken collarbone. So I've learned when you take a Supermoto off-road, you have to actually stay seated. You can't stand up like a dual sport and you have to guide the bike over obstacles. And yet you can, you can roll on the uh, go around twisties without worry. You don't have to worry about low siding like the dual sport motorcycles. You know, so honestly, dual sport motorcycles are a bit overrated. Now, I know some of you guys are saying Cycle Cruiser, you can put the tubeless tires on the dual sports, but they are not rated for street use, okay? Um, they're only rated for off-road use. You don't want to use those because you can end up having problems uh, with the tubeless if you're going too fast out here on the streets with those, those tires. So... That could be dangerous, so don't do it, man. Um, 
so that's why I said you can't there's no tubeless option for a 21 inch front wheel and 18 inch uh, dual sport wheel at least that I know of maybe if there is leave a comment below and let me know but uh, you know the tubeless tires those are made for off-road for dirt bikes or whatnot but that's the biggest issue like I said with the dual sport I spend most of my time out here on the street 90% I say probably 99% street I don't even go off-road that as much as I used to so it didn't make sense for me to continue with a dual sport where the knobbies wear down so fast uh, and you got to replace those tires so often and to deal with inner tubes and all that and, and a risk of puncture and the low side if you get cute around the corners or something so honestly for most people out there for those of you want to get a dual sport this is the best setup for you or even if you get a, a, a you know a, a Kawasaki KLX 300 or DRZ 400 or whatnot uh, even on those supermoto wheels you may want to go with the adventure uh, tires like the Shinko 705 uh, tires on there so that you can go better go off-road better because if you try to mess around off-road with street tires uh, it's it's you know they're not made they're not puncture resistant they're not made to take a beating off-road and they have poor traction you, you probably end up getting stuck in the mud or something out there so I don't recommend messing around off-road with a regular supermoto tires regular street tires if you're gonna do it get the ADV tires on your bike man between the MTL 7 and this bike I'm selecting this bike all day every day baby but I love my MTL 7 but it's nice to change up every now and then but man I love this bike guys um, because I can go anywhere it's like the Jeep of the streets man <laughs> but yet a lot faster than the a lot of the other dual sports out there but anyways guys leave a comment below let me guys let me know what you guys think you know what do you guys like dual sports, supermotos, whatever? Why do you like each one? Whatever. Leave a comment. Let's talk about it. That's why I do these videos. Make sure to hit thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my All In One Motorcycle channel. Hit that little bell symbol so you get notified when my new videos comes out. When I release new videos every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Till next time. Check out my playlist for new riders and popular videos. Don't forget to comment and subscribe and check out my other channel, Bug Out Moto, where I customize a van for my motorcycle so I can live in my van with my motorcycle and travel across the country anywhere. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Bug Out Moto.